following on from the the animated uh, letter T, we're now dealing with um, an, a, sh a piece of text, the letter S, that is much more complex in that it has curves and um, we're going to require a different approach. Now what I have here is I've got the, um, the finished result and you can see that um, it animates in a, in a fairly regular kind of way. We keep that nice hard edge and when we select it we can see how the mask looks. So there really isn't much difference in some ways between what we did with the T and what we're doing with the S. It just requires um, more time and a more complex type of mask to be created. Now I'll walk through the first few parts of this and then um, you can revert to, to the final version for the, the, the full mask. Um, so I'll switch off this and um, just lock it and hide it for the moment and create a new S. I'll make life slightly easier on myself by making it a, a lighter um, typeface and that's fine. Okay, so I'll start this um, S by just creating my my uh, my mask. Now I'm not going to use a rectangle, I'm going to use the pen tool here. Uh, reason being that I'm going to um, start creating a kind of custom shape and the way that this is going to work is I'm go it's going to start simple and then it's going to get much more complex as things go on. So I can start, uh, for example, um, on the first frame by just um, creating uh, a simple mask. Again, I'll set that to... You can hit M to bring up masks and I will change that back to none because I want to see where it's going. And I can select these two guys here now and just bring them down just below where the, the, uh, the shape begins, the text begins. I'll keyframe the mask path and from here on out it really is kind of largely trial and error where I can, didn't want to do that, select various um, vertices and try and line them up as best I can so that they pretty much match the, the the kind of movement and the kind of edge that I want as I work my way around this letter S. And what you'll see is that it should start off fairly straightforward. Always make sure that when you're going to modify a keyframe you go to the keyframe and um, I'll just pull that out like that. I can go along another few seconds and um, Now you'll see here where things start to, to go awry. Because I'm moving around four straight lines then you know it's not really going to work. So I have a few options here. What I can do is I can um, start adding points and converting those points just to make it easier for them to be moved around. And you'll see then that I can maintain that mask and add to it as I need. So I'll go out another few seconds here and um, this one needs to do most of the moving here so I'll just bring that down to there and maybe bring this one here and uh, I can add another keyframe now. So you'll see that the, the mask is anything from pretty but really it's just this line that concerns me. Uh, so long as I can keep that pretty consistent with the, the movement of the mask relative to the shape of the curve of the letter then you know it won't matter uh, at all what the mask looks like. Now, should have watched where I was positioning that keyframe. At this point I could move both to about here and at this point I might even add another keyframe. And each time I add keyframe it moves me further along so I, I may as well actually finish this off. Um, bring that down there. Kind of rotate that one around here and add a point. 
and convert that point so it moves the way I want it to. And from here it's just a case of kind of finishing up that final part of the mask and then moving these two guys up. So you can zoom out on the timeline here at this stage if you want and you can just even just watch where the mask goes. And that looks okay so I can set it to add deselect the, the mask itself and then do a quick um, RAM preview. I'll, I'll probably shrink this down because it's 10 seconds which is way too long and I'll speed that up, hold down ALT, drag that in, do it in do it in 3 seconds maybe. I'll go to just after the animation ends, hit the N key to end the work area and do a RAM preview. And that is looking okay to me. And that is basically how you would use the mask then to, to trace a, a more complex shape. Um, quite often it's going to be a combination of both. I mean, you you know, with single letters it's okay, but sometimes shapes are more complex. You might have this going on and then at some point something might come off here or here. So you might actually find yourself using a combination of the S and the, the T approaches um, on the same object.